All right, welcome to Math 30-3, Chapter 1, Linear Relations. We're going to be starting on 1.1, Linear Relations in Tables and Graphs. Now, first off, we have to review a little bit from 20-3, so we're going to be reviewing slope. Now, as you remember, slope refers to the steepness of a line, uh, sometimes referred to as uh, pitch, if we're talking about roofs. Uh, on a road, it could be called grades. Um, and it is the change in the vertical distance divided by the change in the horizontal distance. Slope can be written um, as m, so you'll see that in your books, and it is basically the change in the rise distance divided by the change in the run distance. This uh, Greek symbol here is delta, and that means change or difference. Now, we also know that slope can be written as a formula, if we're talking about coordinates, as coordinate y2 subtract y1 divided by x2 subtract x1. So basically what we're talking about here is if we were to have a graph, this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis, and we were to have a point here and a point here, and we connect those two points with a straight line, this point here would have a coordinate x and y, and this coordinate point here would have a coordinate also x and y. We could label this x1 and y1, and we could label this x2 and y2, and if we were to find the slope of this line, we would just take the y2 coordinate, subtract uh, from it the x or the y1 coordinate, and divide that by the x2 coordinate, subtract the x1 coordinate, and we would be able to find the slope. So, for example, if we were to have a line such as this, and we call this point A, and we call this point B, and point A had coordinates, let's say x1 is 1, and y1 is 1, and it had coordinate B over here, and it had points, let's say, 4 and 4. Let's make that 4 a little bit better. Using this formula over here, the formula for slope, we could say that the slope is equal to y2 subtract y1, in this case it would be 4 subtract 1, divided by x2 coordinate subtract x1 coordinate, which would be also 4 subtract 1, and we know that 4 subtract 1 is 3, and 4 subtract 1 on the bottom is 3, so we simplify the fraction 3 over 3, any number divided by itself is just 1, so we know that the slope of this line is 1. Now, supposing we were talking about, oh, maybe a ramp, okay? And here's the ground level, and here's the, that's the horizontal distance. Here is um, the vertical distance here, and so let's just connect those two points here. So we have a triangle here, and let's make it a right triangle. Now, the horizontal distance we know is the run distance, so we can label this the run, and the vertical distance is the rise. So if we wanted to find the slope of this line right here, all we want to do is we want to find the distance of the rise, find the distance of the run, and we take the rise distance and we divide it by the run distance and we'll have the slope of the line. Very similar to what we did over here, except over here we had coordinates and we found the change in the coordinates, okay, delta change here. So let's say that this rise was 5. In other words, from this point to this point had a distance of 5 units. And the run distance from here to the beginning of the of the slope, or the beginning of the line, the ramp, is 10 units. We can say that the slope of that line is just the change in the rise divided by the change in the run, or in this case it's just the rise over the run, 
which is equal to 5 divided by 10, which is equal to uh, 0.5 or 1 half. Now, slope can be expressed as a decimal or as a fraction. It's preferable to express it as a uh, fraction, but expressing it as a decimal is not incorrect. Okay, so um, just to backtrack a little bit, uh, this lesson is going to cover pages 9 to 16 in your workbook. Yeah, 9 to 16. So when this video is done, you're going to want to uh, make sure that you complete all the questions in the workbook from page 9 to 16. And uh, as we go along through these videos in the workbook, I will be letting you know what pages that you need to cover um, in the workbook for uh, each individual video. And then once you have those questions done, then what you're going to want to do is uh, you're going to want to check your answers, make sure that they're correct, make sure you understand the material. If you need to, you can go back and uh, you can review the video, you can pause, you can stop, you can, anytime you want, you can go back, um, you can go partially through the video, do some of the questions, and then hit play again and uh, continue all the questions. So once you're done the questions, you've uh, checked your answers, then you can come to me uh, and if you're ready to write a quiz on that material, um, then I can print you one off and then you can try it. Now remember you have to have a minimum uh, mark of 75% to go on to the next unit and you want to make sure that you're ready for each individual test uh, because the last thing you really want to do is not know the material and then have to rewrite it because you know that you have to wait a day in order to rewrite the material. Okay, that being said, let's uh, go on to page 11 of your workbook and let's talk about working with linear relations. Okay, so basically we're going to be talking about graphs. All right, so let me just draw a quick little sketch of a graph right here showing the y-axis and the x-axis. Okay, now in linear relations we uh, have to know a couple of definitions. Um, first off, the definition of a linear relation is just the relationship between two variables that form a straight line because basically when we're talking about linear relations we're talking about a line and lines are straight. Okay, um, we want to know about what the uh, this point here is and that's called the origin. This is the origin of the graph and when we have a line that passes through the origin of the graph, doesn't matter what slope it has. Here I'm just drawing some example lines of slope, different steepnesses, so they'll have different slopes. If that line passes through the origin, it, it has what we call, um, or is what we call a direct linear relation. Okay, the word direct, very important because it passes through the origin. Okay, and also what we need to know is uh, how to label the axis. Now this y-axis here and this x-axis here, when we're graphing information uh, from a table, uh, we want to know what variables to put where. Let me just erase that there, right here. So we want to know what axis to put where, or how to label those axes. So, uh, this axis, the y-axis, is what is called the, has the dependent variable, dependent variable, and the x-axis is known as the independent variable. So we have to ask our question when we're given a table of values, you know, column, two uh, pieces of information, we have to decide what is the dependent variable, what is the independent variable, because it's very important what we put where, because that will change uh, the graph. And we want to put the dependent variable on the y-axis, and we want to put the independent variable on the x-axis, so we have to ask ourselves the question of the data, what variable depends on what? So let's take, for example, um, the example that they have on page 11 of your workbook, example number two, we've got uh, a table that shows uh, a girl named Kalinda and her earnings from babysitting. Now the left hand column shows her hours of work and the right hand column shows her total earnings. So we have to know well 
when we're going to graph this information, do we put the hours of work on the y-axis or on the x-axis? And do we put our total earnings on the y-axis or the x-axis? So we have to ask ourselves the question, well, what depends on what? Uh, do the number of hours she work depend on how much she makes or is what she makes depends on the total hours of work? Well, we can pretty much answer that question by saying that, well, how much she makes depends on how long she works, how many hours she works. So it would make sense if we're going to draw this up to put her earnings, because her earnings depend on the hours of work. So their earnings, the amount of dollars she makes, would go on the on the dependent variable, and the hours would go on the independent variable. So if we were going to graph that, we would put her earnings, how much she earns here, and that would be in dollars, and we would put the number of hours she works on here, probably one, two, three, four, five hours of babysitting, that would be on the independent axis. So the independent axis would be the hours and the dependent axis would be her, uh, how much she makes, her earnings. Okay, so as a review, from pages 9 to 16, we've talked about slope, okay, and it's just rise over run, okay, um, straight line, linear relations is a straight line, uh, so we have also reviewed, if we have a line like this, with a beginning point and an end point, and we have coordinates on here, x and y, and coordinates here, x and y, we can calculate the, calculate the slope just by using this formula here, y2 subtract y1 all over x2 subtract x1. You could also do it this way, taking y1 subtract y2 and x1 subtract x2, and you would end up with the same answer, the exact same slope. Okay, so it doesn't make a difference which coordinate you start with as long as you keep it the same in the formula. Okay, and we also talked, just let me extend the page here just a wee bit. Whoop, go back up here. Extended it a bit too far. We also talked about if we have a graph and we have information on here. Let's say we've got earnings and we've got hours that somebody worked. So we've got information on a table. Uh, we can say hours one, two, three, four, five, and six. And let's say that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. We can take this information on, uh, from this table and we can graph it on a graph and we ask ourselves the question, what depends on what? Well, like we talked before, hours um, is our independent variable and how much we make the earnings is the dependent variable because how much you make depends on the hours. So this would be our dollars, this would be our hours and we could plot this on here. So first hour after one hour of work ten dollars so we want to actually make sure we label our axis so we could say there's ten you could say there's twenty thirty forty and fifty dollars and here's one hour two hours three hours four hours five hours six hours uh, maybe I have to go up to sixty dollars up here and we just plot the points as coordinates. So one hour, $10, two hours, $20, three hours, $30, four, 40, five, 50, and six, 60. Now, obviously this goes through the origin because if you haven't worked any hours, this is coordinate zero, zero. If you haven't worked any hours, you're not going to get paid any dollars. So we connect all those dots with the straight line. And what we have is a direct linear relation because it does go through the 
origin. And if we wanted to find the slope of that line, we could pick any point, any two points on that line. So we could pick this point right here, which is 5 and 50. And let's say this point right here, which is 1 and 10. And if we wanted to find the slope, the slope is just y2 subtract y1 all over x2 subtract x1. And we just have to fill in the blank. So I'll come over here. And I'll say that this is my y2 and x2 coordinate. This is my y1 and x1 coordinate. So um, I'll just punch in the numbers here, substitute the numbers in here. So I have 50 subtract 10 divided by 5 subtract 1 which is equal to 40 over 4, which is equal to 10. That is my slope. The slope of this line is 10. Now you'll also notice that the slope of this line corresponds to how much money she was making uh, for babysitting in one hour. Okay, so that's all there is for this section of uh, chapter one. This We'll label this 1.11. Linear relations in tables and graphs. So go ahead and work up to page 16 in the workbook, and then you can stop there. Okay?